this is Dylan with Irita TV. I have been very, very sick for the last few weeks, kind of technically two months, and I don't know if you can tell, I've lost 10 pounds from being sick, and I really didn't exactly have 10 pounds to lose, so I figured uh, just for fun's sake, I've got a uh, my uh, button-up shirt unbuttoned so you can see just how scrawny I've become. <laughs> I'm uh, feeling a little bit better as of this week. Uh, I'm still physically a little, a little under the weather, but mentally I've I've perked up a bit so I could actually <laughs> do a do a show or two now. But uh, I was it, it was bad, man. I I was really down and under the weather, and like I said, I I've never lost weight from being sick significantly before, and and ten pounds melting off me was. More than I really wanted to give, so uh, soon I got to go work on uh, getting <laughs> getting that weight back. But in the meantime, let's let's talk let's talk about your rights. Let's talk about systematic politics. Let's talk about efficacy, and let's talk about how Team Illuminati Overlord has probably thought of what you're going to do to thwart them, and they have a contingency plan in place for it. And more importantly. How to blow past that contingency plan. Mm. That was a mouthful. That was a lot of stuff. I hoped that interested you because mm, I get excited about this topic. So, why are your rights killing you? Why does nobody care about your rights? So, obviously, particularly if, if you're an American, I would say Western civilization in general, since the Enlightenment era, we've got this concept of rights, or you can even go back to, you know, the kind of the foundations of Christianity, which first looked at human beings and said, oh, my God, you are valuable because you're made in the image of God just from being a human being yourself. Because before that, and in all the rest of the world, before Christianity in the Roman world in particular, and all the rest of the world anyway, no one ever thought that somebody had value just because they existed as a human. You had to have some sort of utility or use to the person in charge or you're useless or a slave or, or someone to be conquered or slaughtered or killed. I mean, whatever. And it was Christianity that really was the first player on the scene that, that suggested, you know, people are valuable just by the act of being a person to begin with. And later, of course, like I said, we, we go down the the uh, Western civilizational history, and at some point we come out with, with, that, with this idea of rights and our entire social organization, our, you know, our governmental constitution and the philosophy that went behind it is really wrapped up in this idea of rights, which I'm not saying is a bad idea. I, th I think it's a, a great philosophical – it's great philosophical terminology and ideas to figure out how can we best prosper and avoid killing each other, right? And, and, and murdering and raping and pillaging each other, right? So I did a, I did a video some time ago uh, analyzing, I think it, it was parents or, or a local school teacher or something in a school board in California where they were exposing like uh, secret rainbow clubs, right? That these, that the kids were getting this, this LGBTQ uh, indoctrination from the school that was hidden from teachers, or, I was not saying that hidden from teachers, but hidden from parents. And when the parents finally found out because a teacher uh, from the inside let them know, the response of the school wasn't to like engage the parents. The response of the school was to <laughs> Uh, proliferate material to the teachers to teach the teachers how to talk to the to the parents to make sure that the kids could continue going to these rainbow clubs. And obviously, I mean, we, we've seen these over and over again throughout the country now where the parents get, you know, uh, passionate, uh, sometimes hopping mad and, and crystal clear on their, their rationale and their critique, and they just lay the school board members to waste. At least they, they appear to do so during the commentary. Uh, commentary period during the school board meetings. And I took the time to not only say that uh, at best it's a waste of time. I mean, I'm not saying there isn't value in letting the, the, the population know that this is the stuff going on and this is how your supposed uh, elected officials that work for you are responding to legitimate criticism about things going on in the school system. But in terms of being 
effective. At best, it's a zero. At worst, you're. Uh, I'll, I'll get into later uh, uh, the just how exactly this plays into Team Illuminati Overlord's hands. Like I said, this has been planned for. But before I get there, I took some time to look into the law in the state of California. Because remember, this this, te this um, either teacher or parent is jumping up and down going, oh my God, look what you're doing. You're hiding this stuff from the parents. And don't you think the parents should have the right to decide? The parents should have the right to this. The parents should have the right to that. And when you look up the law in the state of California, it, it was explicit. Freaking clear as day that <clears throat> um, it's vitally important to the state of California that uh, I, I can't remember if they use the term right in there, but like uh, if they did use the term, it's like kids have the right to or the, the state of California um, recognizes uh, the vital importance that kids receive children in, in um uh, public schools, not I, excuse me. I don't. I don't even think it was public schools. I think it was. It was all school, whether you're charter or private or homeschool or whatever. Any sort of schooling that your child, re, that children receive access to LGBTQ uh, materials, and furthermore, th th this is abundantly explicit that any effort to restrict a child from these LGBTQ materials is considered an act of censorship by California state law. Now, that's brain-meltingly, hair-pulling, eye-exploding, uh, Lee, insane that we're, we've ever gotten to a point where, like, this is actually encoded in some sort of state law. And it's, it's a problem for sure. But when we, again, w the, the word I always want to use, effective, effective. Are we being effective? Are we being effective? How effective is it for someone to jump up and down in front of a school board meeting? To these school board members that, that, are, that are making these decisions when you're saying uh, the parents writes this, the parents writes that, the parents should be able to do this, the parents should be able to do that. In most states, if, if, if you take some time perusing the state laws, it's very clear that the parents are pretty low down on the list in terms of who's in control of, or, or who. I'm going to use this term, stakeholder. We're going to compare the word stakeholder with rights. That... The parents are not the stakeholder over the children. The state or the legislature or the educational – some aspect of the state is the, is the primary stakeholder over the children and their education or, the, or their medical help or their uh, – whatever. Is the state's in charge of the kids. So, in some way, somehow, the state law says that the states are in charge of the kids. And so when you look at this systematically – Right. I'm not talking about morally. I'm not talking about philosophically. I'm not talking about ethically, morally, philosophically and ethically. Of course, parents have such and such rights over their children above the state. Of course. But when we look at systematically the way that the law is actually set up. To go into likely unannounced, like, OK, I'm going to go to the school board meeting and during the commentary time which the school board has no obligation to even react to. The only obligation they have is to give you your three or five minutes or whatever it is to speak. They have no obligation to react to, to jump up and down and make whatever argument you, they want or uh, you want. Why does a school board member care? Okay, okay well, I, I'm going to get you uh, elected out of office. Well, first of all, good luck based on how the, <laughs> the uh, uh, media system works. But second of all, let's say you do get them unelected and you do stick somebody else in there. Well, the somebody else that gets stuck in there, and you're like, we need you to get this LGBTQ stuff out, out, of, the, out of the elementary schools, out of the – stop teaching this to our kids. Well, according to state law, that's an act of censorship. Now, I didn't look up what the, what the penalties of censorship were. I don't know if they're going to arrest you and charge you for 20 years or give you a million-dollar fine or whatever it is. But the point being is to address this at – the, the person who's simply following the way that the system is designed is, is very, very ineffective for actually accomplishing the thing, which is to presumably <laughs> not have this stuff forced down uh, the throats of children, this LGBTQ crap. But worst of all, worst of all, is that this, this sort of reaction was planned for. This is the part that I really want to make clear. So Team Illuminati Overlord, I, I use that term half-jokingly, right? And, and when I use that term, uh, I don't want to express that, like, 
all the elites attempting to control us are all like exactly on the same page. They have factions. They fight between themselves. But this, despite the fact that they have factions and fight between themselves, they all agree on one thing, which is we're uh, cattle that need to be controlled, <laughs> right? So Team Illuminati Overlord has studied us, has studied human beings ad infinitum, right? That They have studied us until they are blue in the face and they keep studying. We're just lab rats to them, right? And they know that we have a survival instinct and we have a tribal instinct and that when we sense that our survival is at stake or our uh, safety and security is at stake, we will push back against the thing that we identify as the problem. In this specific case, I'm talking about the school board uh, situation in California with the LGBTQ stuff. Um, okay, the school board is in charge of the uh, materials that are given to the kids in this school district. Therefore, I'm going to go and direct my energies toward them because that's the thing that I've identified. Team Illuminati Overlord knows that. So what has Team Illuminati Overlord done to get ready for this sort of thing? Now, I've we've brought this up in many show, several shows on Irina TV, which is that according to federal law, the definition for – now, I, I want to be careful because this is going on YouTube, and I know this word is um, – uh, I don't know if censored is the right word. It triggers the algorithm, but domestic <laughs> – I'm, I'm trying to think of a good uh, uh, filler for that. Let's, let's – a domestic florist. There we go. <laughs> the definition for a domestic florist is – uh, and, and I'm not going to pull it up. I pulled it up on the other show. But but it's, it's something akin to if you appear to intend to intimidate a governing body to change a government policy, that's domestic floralism. Appear to intend to intimidate. That's three levels of subjectivity, right? I mean, first of all, to intimidate somebody, I mean, I, I guess there is a level where I could be clearly intimidating somebody, but there's also a level of, well, is this person, you know, I, I feel intimidated. Is he really intimidating me? So there's one level of subjectivity. Um, to intend to intimidate. I don't know how you figure out that somebody intended to intimidate. So there's two levels of subjectivity. And then the third, appear to intend to intimidate. Well... I don't know, this, this person standing next to me appears to be intending to intimidate me right now because I feel that way. That's, that's pretty freaking subjective. And we saw that the system is not joking around with this definition. Uh, in, you know, in, the, in uh, 2020, when everything started going crazy with, with the uh, um, worst virus that ever hit mankind in the summer of love and i don't know if everybody remembers because because it's kind of overshadowed by these by these uh, uh grander things that were happening in the world we were seeing a lot of the people going into the school boards jumping up and down yelling and screaming and, and a lot of it had to do with like mask mandates and and uh jab mandates and, and such things and what was the response what was the response do you remember like they're getting arrested, they're getting dragged out by security, and uh, I, I might have the, the order of operations wrong, but it, it was something akin to this, that the National School Board Association writes a letter to the Department of Justice saying, hey, we need an investigation in here uh, into uh, domestic florists. We need to do an investigation into domestic florists. We, we've got potential domestic florists coming to the school board meetings. And everyone's like, whoa, how did you go from parents upset about the fact that I mean in one guy's case the daughter got raped in the bathroom because a, a cross dresser went into the girl's bathroom and and raped her of course this guy's upset and he goes up and jumping up and down and, and and being passionately and righteously angry about the rights of his daughter and his right as a parent right how do we get from that to domestic florist well I just told you it's, it's clear as day in federal law. Did that, I mean, seriously, did that guy in particular, jumping up and down about his daughter being raped in the, in the school bathroom, did he appear to intend to intimidate a governing body 
in order to change a government policy. Yeah, he did. Now, I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole, but you can be labeled as a domestic florist under that definition. In order to be charged as a domestic florist, you need to have an, uh, a connection to an international organization. You need to have a connection to an international organization. This is why all the Jan 6 people who are, who are still rotting in cells can't have any real charges brought against them, even though domestic florist is, is the, the term that's being thrown around everywhere, is because there's no connection to an international organization. So that I mean that's the subject of another conversation. That it's kind of, uh, at least in this country, Team Illuminati overlords' holy grail, so to speak, to get that international requirement disconnected from the domestic florist charge, not label, but charge, because then anybody who appears to intend to intimidate a governing body in order to change a policy, which is literally anybody, because that's three levels of sub subjective, right? Um, anybody who does that is now a domestic florist. And we can charge them for it. Now, I, I paint this picture, right? So we've we've got the the insanity of the schooling system right now. Uh, in particular, th there's multiple insanities going on. We got the CRT, we got the DEI, uh, the mask and and uh, uh, stabby mandates have have withdrawn for the moment, but we'll see if those come back. We got the comprehensive set. I mean. Comprehensive sex education. We get all this crazy stuff going on. I'm j I'm just focusing on the the crazy rainbow LGBTQ stuff, and this example of this this parent going in who is authentically, righteously upset about the situation, but is totally ineffective in dealing with it. This is what I mean by your rights are killing you, and that your rights don't matter. Team Illuminati Overlord, in their study of us, and again, this goes back to the tribal and survival instincts, know that we are going to get upset about our rights. We're going to want to protest. We're going to want to shake our fist. We're going to want to yell. And we're going to want to attack the near group together. Hey, are you on my team? Okay, wait, you're on my team. Hey, who's on that team over there? Let's go attack that team over there. Because that team is oppressing us over here. That, that's complete tribal. I mean, this is, this is like why people like to watch football, right? This is why people like to watch sports. And this is why we get so uh, bent out of shape about elections and partisan politics. Because it's, it's tribal, it's survival, it's instinct, right? Until a minority of us can learn how to withdraw that survival instinct just a little bit. Not fully. I mean, you got to have some survival instinct, but withdraw it a little bit and step back and see the system for how it is. Until you can do that, or until a certain minority of us can do that, we will always be one step behind Team Illuminati Overlord because they control us and they plan for this instinct. Now, I want to take that word right. They control us and they plan for that instinct. Now, I want to compare the word right, like my rights, to the word stakeholder. The cool new term these days is the term stakeholder. You'd know if, if you've watched any systematic politics video that we've, uh, we've done on the show. The, the Klaus Schwab, WF, Bill Gates crowd for decades now has been pushing this term stakeholder. Now, if, if that term is new to you, what I want you to do is go peruse some government website. And I, I don't just mean like look at the front page. See if you could dig in and start looking for some documents, start looking for meetings, get on an email list, get uh, something. And just look for the term stakeholder in the material that's being sent out. You will start to see it everywhere. And what and it, how you're going to start seeing it everywhere is all of these government organizations are saying, we're holding a meeting to hear from stakeholders. We're doing this for the benefit of stakeholders. We're doing that for the benefit of stakeholders. Stakeholders this, stakeholders that, stakeholders this, stakeholders that. Despite the fact there's no real definition of stakeholder at this point, the term stakeholder is 
I, I'm not going to say it's the new term for rights. It's the thing that's being used to supplant the term rights. And to make matters worse, the I got three things going through my head right now. I want to make sure I explain this as clearly and non bouncing off the walls as I can is the governing apparatus, the people. It, so the, the governing people within the system of government, the policy making system, whether that's bureaucracy or the elected or whatever, are being trained, whether they know it or not, to recognize the people talking about my rights as old rubes, antiquated, unintelligent, not hip with the modern times, dealing with some uh, ideas that aren't relevant anymore. So by talking in that way, you're actually calling yourself out. And when you call yourself out, like I said, I just gave a perfect example. It's not the only one uh, of the, the, domest the domestic florist of the system is set up to identify the people speaking that way and either excrete them from the policymaking apparatuses of government or to to remove them right i mean if like i said if they can get the uh uh international connection uh required for the charge of domestic florist removed or that requirement removed whoo -hoo, they'll know what to do with us then so in terms of i i i, I want to flesh that out, out a little bit too because Again, this this is something that's like in front of your face that you probably never noticed before. It was the same for me until somebody pointed this out. And for the most part, when you go on alternative media in the political sphere, you're not going to hear this. You're not going to hear this. You're, you're, this is going to be the first person you're going to hear this from. Okay. Team Illuminati Overlord. Again, tongue in cheek saying that half joke. Has set up a system that they're rewiring from the background. They're, they're, they're changing society in a way that the football nature of politics, the Democrats, the Republicans, the election this, my, my governor that, my the senator this, and the mayor, and the, blah, 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 that none of that matters to, to the people actually changing the system. The way that they're changing the system is systematically, and it was designed a while ago by the guy by a guy named Charles Merriam. We, we've had Mark Hare on the show to discuss this at nauseum. Um, maybe not at nauseum. It will be at nauseum because it's so important. Charles Merriam set up a system where he and his, I guess, his cronies or his organizations could begin to change the structure of society in the direction that he wants wanted to while avoiding scrutiny, because the scrutiny goes on the football politics, the, the partisan politics side of things, okay? What do I mean by this? An example is, like I just said, moving away from rights to stakeholders, or the fact that um, LGBT material is uh, a right, I, again, I don't know if they use that, that term, the California uh, law, it's a right to, for the kids to access in any attempt to remove it uh, uh, remove that material from kids having access to it is an act of censorship, right? Uh, another example would be all the emergency powers that were given to the governors throughout the country uh, prior to the uh, COVID pandemic. And then all of a sudden during the COVID pandemic, the governors all declared an emergency all at the same time, which leads me to this. And they all seem to have the same policies regardless of whether or not they were on the red or the blue team. Now, I know blue blue states shut down harder than red states, but for example, the idea of putting the infected people into nursing homes. Like, oh, we need the overflow to put put the people in the nursing homes. That was an idea handed to the gov all the governors from the National Governors Association. I want to get to these associations. So, there's there's a thing called the National Governors Association and right now I believe it's the governor of Utah. His last name is Cox, uh, C-O-X, uh, who is the chairman. Uh, formerly, it was, uh, I can never remember which Cuomo was which. There's Chris Cuomo and Andrew Cuomo, and one was part of CNN, one was the governor of New York. I always, I always screw him up. But the Cuomo, who was the governor of New York before he got 
shit canned, uh, was the former uh, chairman of the National Governors Association. There's a Western Governors Association. There's like a South Southern or Southwestern Governors Association. There's a, a National or, uh, Association for uh, Municipalities. There's a National Association for uh, City Councils or for County Councils or for Mayors or for uh, Auditors. There's, there's a State Association for your Sheriffs. There's a State Association for your uh, Assessor. For th There's these like associations that are everywhere. Everywhere, like like I said, it, it, now that I've told you, you're, you're gonna just see them everywhere, and they sound so innocuous. They sound so, oh, you know, we, we meet together. The 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 Washington State Association of County Auditors meets together to make sure that we all do auditing really well. Ha <laughs> ha, right? Well, in reality, what's going on is th this this hidden policy making apparatus is what's sending policy to these associations. It's sending the policy to these associations and influencing, the, influencing these, these associations to start thinking more progressively. Now, I don't, I don't mean that term in the sense of how it's used today, like the left is progressive. No, no, no. I mean that in like the 1800s term where progressive is more like Fabian socialist, uh, eugenicist, sort of thing, um, Platoist sort of idea where, okay, uh, this this um, idea of, you know, separation of powers and uh, uh, representative government, that's all old stuff. That's all, you know, boring, outdated stuff. We need to move into the future where we can control who, uh, who gets to live and who gets to die. <laughs> we, we get to control um, who needs an abortion? We get to control how long old people get to live. We get to control what the young people are learning. That that sort of progressive is what I'm talking about. So, the the plan is to push those sorts of progressive policies systematically to be built into the system. So then it doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter who the elected representative is because the system is built in the way that their team Illuminati overlords goals are achieved anyway. So now go, uh, you know, uh, again, and I'm trying not to, to bounce around too much, but th there is, there is a linear path that I'm trying to get to here. When we go back to, and, and again, that linear path is, are you effective? Are you effective? Are you effective? We've already described how ineffective it is to jump up and down in front of the school board because they've planned for that. You're not addressing the real issue, and there's handy laws in place that are ready to throw you in jail for it. So, think about it in terms of these elected or, or even unelected officials, usually elected though. Most of them are pretty dumb. I mean that literally. Most of them are pretty dumb. They go in there. They don't know how to do the job. And I'm not even talking about like, the, you know, the governor in up levels of how, you know, people are like trained and selected by Team Illuminati. I'm not even talk I'm, I'm talking about that. I'm like state representative or county council or, or whatever, right? You know, city dog catcher or something, right? That um, these people get in, they don't know what the policy should be. How do you write a policy? Right. I, I mean, go digging through any like city's ordinances or, or the or the state laws or the or the uh, state regulations or something. I mean, it, it if you put it in books, it'd just be like books after books after books after books. Like, do you know what the policy should be and how they should be written? Like, I don't know. So these people get in and they want it easy. They want someone to do the work for them. And uh, I, I might dig it up and find it and and. and Edit, edit, edit into this video. There was a video that came out recently. I think it was from California, some some meeting of city or county council people or something like that, one of the associations I told you about, where there was explicitly this woman who I think was city or county council who said very, very explicitly, these elected officials, me being one of them, we get in, we have no idea what we're doing there's these bureaucrats who've been working there for jobs for 30 years or whatever. And because the elected officials get in, they don't have, no, have any idea what's going on. They just listen to whatever the bureaucrat or, or the, the person working in the office tells them because they, they've got seniority and they've been there for so long. 
So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Washington State Representative Doerr was recently down at a forum in Portland, and uh, that forum was held by a group called Yimby. It was uh, actually Yimby Town 2022. This was really a forum that they were originally planning to have in 2020, but with COVID kicking in, it got kicked down the road a couple years. And so she was on a panel there. Now, if you go and you look at the website, which I've linked down below, you can see she's not listed as one of the speakers there, but she was a speaker on this panel along with Representative Fitzgibbons and some other people. And uh, there was a clip that uh, went public very briefly. And then, of course, they shut down the YouTube clip. And I think that it's worth looking at this clip because and listening to what she had to say, because I think just an, as an accident, I think that this representative, Representative Doerr, actually dropped a truth bomb right in the middle of this forum, right in the middle of these lefties talking about central control and central planning. I think she dropped a truth bomb that uh, many people should should listen to. Davina, hey, anything to add? Oh, I have so much to add. <laughs> <laughs> um, the local control, it's, a, it's garbage. It's just complete garbage. Because I'll tell you, local, local, local electeds don't know anything. They literally don't know anything. They go in, <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. You get elected and you're just so excited to be there. And the easiest thing in the world to do is what staff recommends because they don't know anything. They don't research. They haven't done their homework. They know nothing about policy. And, and but they like the title. Most of them just like the title and it's super easy to show up and do what staff recommends. And I'll tell you, I, I know many local electeds who would love for the state to step in because we are the ones that get accosted in the grocery store by our neighbors who say, how dare you consider upzoning? So when Team Illuminati Overlord approaches them through one of these associations versus you and I approaching them, jumping up and down about our rights. Let's just think about that from like a human nature perspective. So Team Illuminati Overlord comes to me. I mean, it's not Bill Gates walking up to me, right? It's, it's through, through these associations saying, hey, you're a new city council member. We would like to invite you to the uh, uh, State Association of City Councils and if you're if you're doing really well there, you might even be invited to the National Association of City Councils, and there we'll help you with uh, your policy making, because we know that it's very very hard to make policy, particularly in the you know in this crazy world where there's so many laws and regulations and things that you could trip up even at the state level. Um, we want to help you with that. We want to advocate for you. We want to we want to help. You know, we got lawyers on staff that can help you navigate through through difficulty. You just got to give give them a call. Oh, we can give you liability protection and liability insurance in case you do screw up, in case someone does come after you. Come on. I mean, we'll fly you out. We'll feed you dinner. You know, there'll be a party afterward. It'll be great. I mean, that sounds like a pretty nice offer, <laughs> right? I mean. Shit, I, I might show up to one of those, even though it was Team Illuminati Overlord, just for the just for the party and the drinks. Compare that to here's um, uh, uh, you know, now it's it's time for city council, and here's this guy screaming at me. You screwed up this, and you screwed up that, and you work for us, and we're we the people, and my rights. Blah, 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 blah. Who are you gonna listen to more? From your human nature, the guy whining and dining you, being nice, offering you all these bonuses and benefits and, 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 and special clubs that you can hang out and rub shoulders with higher people and bleh. Or the, the dude from down from the city that you never met, like jumping up and down screaming at you. You know the answer. Or even worse, OK, hey, city councilman, I, I would like to spend some time to meet with you. What's that person likely to do? If they're on your side, they're likely going to tell you, here's the things that you need to do because we're on the same side and you're not doing it well enough. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. You need to do that. Or if they're not on your side, oh, you're the worst thing ever. You can't believe you're doing it. You're on the wrong path. So in terms of the rabble, us, the elected in the system, and the governing system are used to just getting bombarded with us with no real solutions. 
I mean, again, go go back to go back to the California school board meeting I was talking about. Let's say that entire school board was with this this woman speaking. Like we agree with you. What are they supposed to do? It's state law that they cannot. And, and, and you know, a, a city is incorporated under the authority of the state. It's not like between the state and the feds, where you know that they fight over who exactly has authority over what. For the city. For the, the the city and the and the, the state to to come into into, into blows, the, the state's kind of like, well, you were created under my authority, so anything that you do has to be underneath my authority. State law explicitly says that if you if you were to remove these materials from the school, that is an act of censorship. Now again, like I said, I don't remember, I didn't look up what the punishment for censorship was, but uh, the the point still made is that systematically, how is someone at the school board level supposed to pass? Um, what would you call it? An ordinance? A, a school board policy? Whatever you call it. How, how is the school board supposed to pass policy that challenges state law? Now, I would do it anyway, <laughs> right? But th then, you know, the, the state comes back or the, the uh, head of public instruction or whatever they call it in, in whatever state that, we're that you happen to be looking at comes out and says, oh, if you do this, your funding is tied to this. You're going to lose all your funding and the school's going to shut down. And blah, 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 and you're going to lose your insurance and you're going to lose. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's scary. And we saw this with the uh, – after 2020, there were, uh, you know, we saw it in the news that there's a lot of these uh, – uh, Team Illuminati Overlord uh, bastards getting kicked out of office and being elected by uh, supposedly, in quotes, Patriot uh, uh, school board members. And then the Patriot school board members going along with the stuff that, that they were elected to resist. And the people going, we elected you to not do that. They don't see what's going on in the background. They don't see the system which is going on in the background. So... I'm, I'm saying all this, again, uh, efficacy. Are, you, are we being efficient? Are we being efficient at the goal? Are we being efficient at the goal? Are we being efficient at the goal? A, a trap has been set up for us because it is known that we will get upset about our rights and will attack what we believe is causing us the harm. That's checkers. If we can learn to sit back, take a deep breath, and say, okay, I've got a goal, and I can't let my immediate emotions distract me from that goal. We see that it's effective to wine and I see that it's effective to wine and dine these people that make policy in order to gain influence over them. Maybe it's more effective if I learned to do something similar. And I mean, this is what I learned from the Center for Self-Governance, right? I, I haven't said it yet. Obviously, if, you, if you've heard me on any systematic politics show before, it's, I inevitably bring up the Center for Self-Governance. That's how I learned to start thinking like this. And I hope this is entirely fresh information to you. Because again, you, you go on any alternative media and they're gonna be jumping up and down. I mean, they might mention systematic things, but there's never a systematic solution to deal with it, right? It's all, how are we gonna elect Trump? Or, you know, even if Trump's elected, he's, he's on team, Illum team Illuminati Overlord, and I, oh my God, if, if we can just get my governor, or we can just get the Senate to be this much Republican, or we can just get the House to be that much Democrat, blah, 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 blah. that's all. It's not entirely horseshit, because at the end of the day, those are the people who are, who are making the decisions, right? But your ability to influence those people is much smaller than the ability of Team Illuminati Overlord. So once you start to learn how to think systematically and you recognize that, you know, most people, again, I'm, I'm using this term Team Illuminati Overlord. That's really the top, the top, 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 right? Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab sort of people, right? Even if the person on your county council is doing everything on team illuminati overlords agenda they're oh we we want ai writing law and we have to ha we have to have uh turn off all uh uh stoves for uh climate change reasons and uh lgbtq flyers stapled on every ch child's forehead i mean it, it, they're doing all of it that doesn't mean like they're in the club right that person 
That person still has human needs and wants. And when you can identify what the human needs and wants are of that person, particularly in their role, and what time it is during that role, is it legislative season or is it election season? They're going to have entirely different motivations depending on what season that is. If you can learn to direct and say, hey, here's the thing that you want, maybe you weren't aware of this. Right? Were you aware that um, in Brazil, there was a city that, that just passed a law that was written by an AI? Do you think it's a good idea to have AI writing laws? Right? Or um, who, do you, who do you feel, who do you think is the primary stakeholder of a child's upbringing, particularly to, to a school board member? Well, in most cases, the, the, the guy's going to say, well, the parents, of course. Who else would it be? I mean, they've never been two and two together. Well, hey, would you be against, Pat, you know, um, uh, putting this resolution to the board that identifies parents as the primary stakeholders over their children's upbringing? Yeah. I mean, they might get scared off from it, but that uh, I, I, you know, for the most part, unless you find some crazy progressive that's like, oh, this, I, I think it's the state. Well, then you don't worry about don't bother talking to that guy. Right. But you, you learn how to influence and say, hey, look, you know. Um, your ch maybe your chances of being reelected are much higher if you're able to get this pushed through and everybody will be, you know, see you as, as a uh, 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 hero within the community. And, and then they can turn around and say, well, we're worried about the, the, the state reducing our funding or taking away our liability insurance or the state threatening this, this and this. And well, maybe we can help you with that. And what if even more spectacularly and there's organizations being formed as we speak, they're in the works of being formed. To address this, what if there was another organization that could compete with the policymaking apparatus of Team Illuminati Overlord, right? All this policy that's being generated in the direction of technocratic total control and depopulation. Nobody, there, it's got a monopoly. There's nobody challenging it. There's nobody challenging it. So what if, what if you had, for example, another organization that said, hey, we provide policy. We could provide liability insurance. We could provide ad ad advocacy. And we could do it in a way that actually aligns with your ethics. You, you, I mean, you know, you got in there to change things. If it's a, or it's a patriot or whatever, right? You got in there to change things, but you can't do it because you're, you're fighting this uphill battle and, and the whole system is trying to excrete you. We can help you with that. We can help you with that. We can help you train you to think systematically so you could start playing chess. You can start playing chess. Now we're becoming effective because we're exploiting the weakness. And the weakness is Team Illuminati Overlord believes that you are incapable of not going, ah, my rights, and jumping up and down and protesting. Ah, my rights. Ah, and attacking the first thing that you, that you identify as the problem. Right? And, I mean, on one level... That's their, that's their justification for why we need to be controlled because we're, we're just like these totally selfish automatons that g can't think fa past our own bellies that just eat whatever's in front of us and we have no self-control, right? Well, if that's true, then they're right. <laughs> we're just cattle. But if, if we can actually step back and say, wait a minute, I can do the same thing they're doing, they have no defense against that. There is no plan for them against that. They have the monopoly. They know they have the monopoly. And because they feel, they believe that we are incapable of doing something similar, they have no defense against it. It's not even like vaguely within their awareness that we have the capability of doing such a thing. Now, I may be, this may be overwhelming, right? And again, centerforselfgovernance.com, you'll be trained how to do it. When you start to hear the examples and you start to hear the stories, and I've, inter and I've interviewed some people here who have, who have had massive systematic politics success stories, that within uh, – on state level, for example, getting parents as primary stakeholders passed in Washington, Idaho, and North Dakota, for example, making sure that um, – AI it never receives personhood rights. So what, what? I mean, let me let me unpack that one too. What does that even mean? What, AI having personhood rights, huh? And this is why we get outmaneuvered. You hear something like that, and you don't even, you don't even know what it is. 
if AI receives personhood rights, and let me be clear about AI here real quick. It's not sentient. It doesn't think for itself. It's, it's like a statistical um, languaging model that does what it's programmed to do. So I, I did a show somewhat recently about Stephen Colbert having um, – uh, what the heck's that guy's name? Uh, Noah Yuval Harari or Yuval Noah Harari, the uh, mad scientist for the WDF, WEF on. And they had this grand conversation about how humans are so stupid and they screw everything up and that Stephen Colbert is ready for the machine overlords to be unbiased and to help and help tell us what to do, right? So th there's, there's going to be this trotting out of – AI is unbiased. AI is unbiased. You're biased. You're selfish. AI is unbiased. They can look at things unbiasedly. They are unbiased, and they can they can make better rules and better laws, right? And on top of it, if they're they're actually creating stuff, well, shouldn't they have a right to what they create? And in order to have, for them to have a right to what they create, shouldn't they be a person, kind of like you know, uh, uh, a business is a person, and you know, an LLC is a person, a corporation is a person. You know, it, there's precedent for this, so shouldn't we give the AI? personhood rights, right? Th that's the the ladder for taking the control away from human beings. To have AI have more and more control over everybody's life, over the rulemaking apparatus, over the, over the monitoring, over everybody, is first and foremost, it has to be given personhood rights, okay? In Idaho, Utah, and, Nor and uh, North Dakota now, state law, CSG teams have managed to influence the appropriate policymakers, the, uh, the uh, uh, appropriate lawmakers into passing that sta uh, state law uh, does not recognize AI and inanimate objects and animals. I mean, that's a whole, whole other conversation um, as having does not recognize them as having personhood rights. It doesn't recognize them as people. Right. Because it, anything that has rights that isn't a human. All that's doing is taking your rights away. Let, let, let me explain that. For example, there's this push that's happened in, in some country. I think Bolivia. Uh, I remember reading about this uh, like 15 years ago or 13 years ago or something. That Bolivia passed some constitutional amendment that recognized that, na that nature has inalienable rights. And that sounds good because we want to protect nature, right? Well, in reality, the point is if nature has rights, that means you don't, right? If I run over a bug, if, if, if I step on a snail – if I cut down a tree, if I um, take a glass of uh, – not that I would drink from a lake, but if I take a glass of water from a lake and drink it, have I violated the rights of those things? Well, if I have, well, do I need to be charged for murder? Do I need to be charged for theft? And more importantly, who's going to do that charging? Well, humans obviously are the only ones that could do it. And maybe they even put AI in the middle. Well, the AI is going to figure it out, and because they're unbiased, they're going to charge you. Well, again, the AI only does what the humans program it to do, <laughs> right? There's somewhere far in the back. There's humans telling it what to do. So, getting ahead of that and and recognizing that that is the real chess game getting played, not the partisan politics thing. Not the uh, okay, the Democrats this or the Republicans that or the Trump this or or you know whatever your governor gubernatorial candidate. Blah, blah, blah. Now, it's not like that's a hundred percent a distraction. It is important who gets into those roles because it affects how you can influence them. It affects how you can influence them. However, in that world, it's winner take all. Either my team won, in which case woohoo I win, or my team lost, in which case I lost everything. In the systematic politics world, everything's just another chess move. So even if your team doesn't win, you have a way of playing against the other team. Okay? Am I melting your brain? Am I going over too, too much stuff at once? So on one hand, I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm drawing a big picture and it sounds kind of overwhelming, right? But on the other hand, I, I want to firmly express that... I've experienced this myself, and I've seen it in, in the uh, people who've been trained in CSG who are actively doing it, how incredibly effective and incredibly penetrating their small actions can be compared to the enemies working against us. It's, it's just unreal. And like I said, if a certain minority – I don't know what the minority is, but I mean it's, it's something akin to if we had a team of five – to 20 people in each county in the country, 
And, I mean, how many counties are in the country? I'm going to look that up. How many counties in the United States? Three thousand two hundred and forty-three counties. So, okay, multiply that by ten, roughly speaking, thirty thousand, thirty-five thousand people. On one hand, that's a lot, but on the other hand, that's really a minority. That's really a minority. That it, that if that many people were actively working systematically in the opposite direction that Team Illuminati Overlord is working systematically against us, they would be completely outgunned. They would be completely outmatched. They'd be completely thwarted. Because like I said, they have no defense against it because it never occurred to them that they would need to make a defense because the entire premise of what they're doing is that we are incapable of doing the same thing back to them. You want to learn how to do it? Centerforselfgovernance.com. The website's a little clunky because uh, they spend most of their time training people as opposed to looking at the website. So feel free to reach out to me if you're interested. I can I can I can hook y'all up. But it's it's so important that we start thinking this way. And uh, this is also important to mention. It's so not sexy. It's so boring. It's so mundane to think like this. And there's no limelight. There's no limelight. Right. If you're part of the team that influences the, the, the people making the initiative to uh, about parents rights to include parents as primary stakeholders. People who sign that initiative don't even know what that means. They're more they, they're, they're my rights, my rights, my, my, my rights, all parental rights, parental rights. They don't even know what the, the parents as primary stakeholders is. They don't know that you put it there. And even if they did, they, they like, who is this guy? This this sentence that I don't even understand. Why would I care about that? There's no limelight here. It's boring. There, there, there's, there's no, you know, football excitement about my team won or your team lost or, or whatever. So it's a, it's a completely different mindset, and it's a completely different thing to get to get excited about. But I'll tell you, it gets exciting once you start seeing not only the wins, but how easy it is to gather these wins. So. I hope that wasn't too convoluting, but it's it, it's just so important and it's it's so effective. Again, are you being effective? Are you being effective? Are you being effective? Are you being effective at getting your rights back, at making sure that Team Illuminati Overlord doesn't take over your life or potentially kill you because, I mean, it's kind of one of the stated goals, right? We want to uh, reduce the population by 80%. Stated goal. <laughs> Uh, if, if you want to fight about, back against that, we have to be effective in partisan politics and jumping up and down our rights about our rights is not effective. In fact, doing so is killing you because it's already planned for just like the examples I described. So this has been Dylan Moore with Irita TV, which you can find at irita.tv. Thanks for watching. See you next time.